So that is our nonprofit side. So uh, right as we were right before we were for, well, we're forming Oya Media Group, um, Allison had this um, you know incredible idea to um, start an emerging filmmakers program, um, and this is for Black um, uh, youth who are graduates of un, um, of undergraduate programs. Uh, and who want to, you know, get their start in the industry, but just need a little bit of assistance, a little bit of um, support. And so it's an eight month program that takes them through skills development, um, networking, um, and as well as project creation. And so we're in our fourth year of the program. We take about 15 to 20 participants per year. And it's just been incredible so far to see the growth of these participants. The, and then we also, they also get to create a project um, and it kind of changes each year. And so the second year program, we partnered with uh, Fabian Colas Foundation and created um, six short uh, documentaries um, called Being Black in Toronto. And the directors ended up winning a Canadian Screen Award for Best Direction in the Documentary Series. Um, as a result of that. So we're really, really part proud of our program. We have 60 alumni. And like I said, we're going into our fourth year. And because of that program um, and the service it does for the community, we decided to create a non nonprofit organization and kind of formalize that. And so that's how um, OBAC came about. And then we have just launched um, another program called Scale Up Initiative, uh, which is to um, empower black owned production companies with skills um, and uh, skills building and, and um, net networking and um, and through that program um, it's funded by FedDev um, in southern Ontario so really thankful to have that support there and um, we have great partners on board like the Canadian Film Centre and uh, WIFT Toronto, Visible Media and so we run a business affairs boot camp program to give mid-career um, uh, producers the skills to you know scale up their projects so they can take on bigger projects they can get be eligible for tax credits and kind of really take full advantage of our canadian funding system um, that is i think under tapped by um, black creators uh, as well as we have the, our scale up immersive lab which is um, uh, an immersive media lab uh, partnered with the canadian film center to really bring black creators into the immersive media space because immersive media, you know, like virtual reality, XR, VR, MR, mixed reality, uh, that whole world is really undertapped and it's really, really, um, you know, white male led and mm -hmm. needs a lot of diversity. So we're trying to bring creators into that space to really, you know, kind of um, make sure we get a piece of that a million dollar pie because there's, <laughs> there's lots going on in that, in that, in that side of things. Yeah, I was going to ask you why you would take on developing a not-for-profit, especially with so much going on, but you just answered the question. Uh, it's really important, and uh, and we need more diversity. Yeah, like I think ultimately we're building community, right? Um, we're building community, one, one, one group, one set of, of people, in one masterclass workshop at a time. Um, ultimately, the the end goal is to have to make sure that everyone who um, is sort of um, wanting to be in the industry, qualified for the industry um, is there, um, is there and is working and is providing and is contributing in a meaningful way. Um, you know, five, 10 years down the line, I'm sure, you know, I hope, <laughs> I hope that, you know, sort of we can see like the, the impact that OBAC has had, that, that will have, you know, over, over, over such a long time, just bringing all these people in and making sure that they have what they need to, to excel. So a couple of uh, final questions. One is, if somebody wants to watch Mr. Jane and Finch, what's the best way to do it? Um, well, two ways. If you're in Canada, you can watch it on um, CBC Gem. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, do a search for Mr. Jane and Finch, or you can find it in the documentary section. Um, otherwise, you can reach out to us, and you can always book it for a screening. Um, uh, we can arrange private screenings um, and... Uh, or if anyone wants to distribute internationally, that's an option too. But uh, yeah, we're happy. We're happy to have it shared. We love that it can, you know, bring about great conversation, um, bring communities together, and you know, and create that empowerment. So yeah. So, what words would you have of encouragement for a young documentarian or young filmmaker, and how do they get a hold of Oya Media? Words for a documentary filmmaker: just do it. Just do mm -hmm. it. Just, just make the work. The thing is, once you go through the process from start to finish, you just learn so much and 
the next project will be better, you know, and then go on and make that next project. You know, and every project will get bigger and better and everything builds on top of each other. So, um, and then also I would say is really love and be so passionate. You have to be your biggest cheerleader for whatever project that you're working on because documentaries don't happen overnight. And Mr. Jane and Finch took three years to make, although production took nine months <laughs> and post-production, you know, so it was a fast, fast film. Um, but it did take time. And so you have to be able to, you know, have the longevity. Um, so I think just um, really loving and, and, and then because you're also going to get a lot of no's. Like Mr. Jenny Finch, we got no's. Although, you know, the yeses were really big yeses and really big wins. Um, but we had no's. And so you have to be your biggest cheerleader. What haven't we talked about that we should be talking about? One of the, one of the reasons why we're even having this conversation is because... Um, because Mr. Jane and Finch was part of Starry Money Impact, um, which graciously um, focuses on making sure that films like this create the kind of impact that um, they're capable of. Um, and for, for this film, this conversation is even um, more uh, sort of important at this time because we do have elections coming up in Canada um, um, in, in June and in October for Ontario. Um, so it's just uh, a good time to remind people that it's never too um, early or late to become engaged, to look at um, what is necessary um, and what you think you're capable of um, in terms of um, being engaged and, 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 and get at it. Well said. And just to, to add on that, uh, people can um, if, find the film or find more information about the film and how you can kind of take action um, within your own communities um, uh, through mrjaneandfinch.com. And you can learn more about Oya Media Group from oyamediagroup.com and on socials um, at Oya Media Group. We are, um, I think, really excited to see this film hope you know make an impact for this the this election year it's a big election year for Ontario and I hope that we see a lot of people from their own communities represented um, uh, on the ballots and we see you know the voter turnout come out and people feel empowered to support um, their community members excellent I really want to thank you both for uh, taking time uh, to finally you know get us all together to uh, <laughs> To catch up. No, it's been a, it's been a thrill, and I love the documentary. Uh, it's such a wonderful story. So, uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, for hanging out. Well, thank you for having us. It's been a, a so pleasure. Much. We've been speaking with Gaddy Conti George and Elise Winnington, and mostly about the uh, the documentary, Mister Jane and Finch, which I urge you to uh, have a look at. It's a great story. Sad ending, and uh, there's lots of disturbing issues about our political system, but it's still a great documentary. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about Mr. Jane and Fitch uh, on CBC and MrJaneandFitch.com and OyaMedia.com. That's another edition of the Conversation Lab. This radio program and podcast is produced by CFRO-FM in Vancouver's downtown east side. We're on the territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil Nations. Our gratitude and thanks to them, as well as to the many not-for-profit organizations, community groups, and change makers around the world that support this program. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please consider becoming a member of Co-op Radio to support this program and the many others produced by hundreds of volunteers. If you have a story to share or know someone who does, please have them contact us at coopradio.org, theconversationlab.ca, and on many social media and podcasting platforms. This episode was cobbled together with some help from Brian McKinnon, Kim Sakon, John Massacar, and Julian Anton. Thanks, guys, and thank you for listening. I'm Don Schaefer.